I said in the last video that we're going to talk about the balance sheet, but before I go into the balance sheet, I want to lay some other business financials down. Now, I'm supposed to be talking about oil and I'm off in business minutiae, but it's good to know how, it, how the machine works because we're going to later go and analyze companies. So, um, right at the start, there's this magic thing called a purchase order. often called a PO. And this is an agreement to buy a product. So when we want to um, we want to buy $10,000 in modems, we issue a PO and it has some number, you know, one, two, three, four, five, whatever. And that's a unique number. And we send this document to, let's case, let's do it to Wiley again. And it says, you know, I want $10,000 worth of modems number 234, part number, P, part number. And now what they do is they, um, this, is the, this is the document, and um, so they, they get this purchase order, and nothing happens in business without a purchase order. Nothing. You don't move until the purchase order occurs. Now, Sometimes when you're in a desperate situation and you're working with companies, they tell you to do something ahead of time and you start working on it. Then you spend all your time begging them, cut a PO, cut a PO, cut a PO. I need a PO because you're weak and you're, you're, you're working ahead of time, but you, you can't invoice these guys until you get that number. The most important thing in business is the thing I just mentioned is the invoice. So when, when Wiley um, ships these 10,000 modem, or these 10,000 parts, immediately they send uh, an accompanying document called an invoice and they have, they reference the PO number. So they say PO number one, two, three, four, five, and this starts a clock. So um, once again, this is the most important document in business. This is the document that starts all business moving. This is the one that's the most important because you've got to start a clock with the customer. And let's explain that. So when you're, when you're in business, it's not, it's not intuitive, but there's an agreement um, that on that invoice, it says something usually net 30. And that's a statement that says you have to pay your bills within 30 days. And um, that, that's common through the industry that um, after you get your invoice, you, you, you pay in 30 days. Now, um, that, uh, when you're cash strapped, you sometimes push this out to 30, 45, and, um, and it's it kind of an indicator to your vendor that you're weak. So you, um, you always want to have, you, you don't want to get too, push too much onto the vendor. If you're rich, what you have is another little term on the invoice, which is 2% net 10. And this is a neat little thing that says, if you've got, your, if you've got cash in the bank, we'll knock 2% off the invoice if you pay us in 10 days. So this, is, this encourages rapid payment. So if you, are, um, if you do have cash around, on a 12 month basis, this, this accumulates to almost 24%. So rich companies take advantage of this 2% net 10 and they pay early and uh, then they're, they're getting their money to work at 24%, which is amazing. Now, so you, you kind of, I, I, it's not intuitive that you have this 30 day slush in this, this machine. I, I, it took me a while to figure out how it works. Um, my dad worked at John Deere and they would pay net 60, not because they, uh, we're trying to, they had cash, but they just were slow in processing. And little companies that worked with them almost died in the, in the time period where they would you know, cut the checks. So um, it, there's a whole art to when you pay bills and um, how, how much the, the financial people in the, in the company really tune the system to work under the conditions that, um, that are critical to the company. Now, there's another two terms which are um, very similar, or they're the, they're the groups within the company that have to deal with this, this 
net 30 and um, these are the two things we're going to see in the balance sheets that's why I'm, we're going to build to these two so receivables and payables the way to remember this is here's you you're the company and uh, over here you have a customer so you just sold your modem or something and you so they're over here and you have got to receive you're trying to receive money from the customer you're trying you want to uh, you want to invoice them they issued you a purchase order you shipped you send that invoice right away and then you they start the clock and they they're trying to stay they're going to pay in 30 days or worse on the opposite side you have your wiley your vendor the one you bought the chips from and they are asking you to pay so wiley wants you to pay the bill so payable goes to somebody and receivable comes towards you these numbers will be displayed in the balance sheet because you're while you, while you haven't actually got the money in your pocket you know, and you haven't actually you've got extra money here because you haven't paid your bill these show up as assets and liability on the balance sheet because the balance sheet understands that there's this 30-day float of things moving around and so um, it all it, you don't you can't you, you you report the the nuances of this billing system so um, one of the things that uh, a finance CFO a, a chief financial officer does is if things are going really well in the company uh, he sets aside money that are called accruals or reserves and what you're trying to do here is you're kind of ahead of schedule Wall Street you're doing better than Wall Street predicts so you, you kind of set this money aside in your balance sheet and you you say that well we might have a big problem in the future so we better set aside some money in case like our, our products get returned so it's um, it's kind of it's a technique where you're squirreling away money for the future and um, the the business guys can see this happening on the balance sheet and they they know you're doing well and you're kind of putting stuff away for a rainy day and then if you get into trouble and your company's um, if the if you're losing money then you'll notice that these these numbers kind of come out and they start you know, kind of making the numbers look better so this is a little this is a little not a huge thing but financial people can they've got a little bit of um, maneuverability in the reporting to Wall Street they um, it's not obvious but the Wall Street analysts they can see it they maybe the general investor can't see it but a really and a, the people that are called analysts they spend their on big companies they spend their whole time watching one company they 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 focus on it they listen to it they everything that's happening they, they report the results of that one company and they report either buy sell or hold to the people that are invested in it so if it's good buy it um, if it's bad sell it and then hold is the middle so um, you've got to keep an eye on the the little nuances of a of a um, 10 I don't know the, the report that you get for um, a public company every three months so this is just general business maneuverment movement um, I've got to, I had to explain this so we didn't uh, I didn't surprise you once we got the balance sheet so that's that uh, general business Talk to you later.